Welcome to Damn Weird. And in this, I'm going to attempt to organize my collective thoughts on uh, various unusual events and things and people that have occurred and things I've studied. Just a way to organize them here onto YouTube for me. Now we're going to start with some of the easier things simply because we need kind of a foundation for our studies, for something to look at. These are things that maybe shouldn't exist, but do. The strongest theory for this is actually a dog. Although a new feral species of dog, the needs for their study on its own. Besides that, don't you think a dog being called a chupacabra is gonna negatively impact this animal's existence or even further study? Let's just rename this later identified creature not improperly label it as something else earlier reported. And I state a new type of dog because dogs have been attacking chickens and goats for years there. People have seen what it looks like. This is something different. It could still be a dog, but one with different habits on its dining or its hunting. This group's of descriptions of the chupacabra as I'm breaking it down is a strange breed of a wild dog. His form is mostly hairless, may have mange, and has a pronounced spinal ridge, unusually pronounced eye sockets, fangs, and claws. Unlike conventional predators, the chupacabra is said to drain all of the animal's blood and sometimes organs, usually through three holes in the shape of an upside down triangle, or through one of the two holes. Puerto Rican authorities maintain that the deaths were due to attacks from groups of stray dogs or other exotic animals, such as panthers, illegally introduced into the island's territory. In late October 2010, University of Michigan biologist Barry O'Connor concluded that all the chupacabra reports in the United States were simply coyotes infected with parasite Sacopetes scabiei, whose symptoms would explain most of the features of the chupacabra. They would be left with little fur, thickened skin, and a rank odor. O'Connor theorized the attacks on goats occurred because these animals are greatly weakened. They're going to have a hard time hunting, so they may be forced into attacking livestock because it's easier than running down a rabbit or a deer. Although several witnesses come to the conclusion that the attacks could not be the work of dogs or coyotes, because they had not eaten the victim. This conclusion is incorrect though. Both dogs and coyotes can kill and not consume their prey, either because they are inexperienced or do injury or difficulty in killing. Possibly its illness could leave it unable to hunt as it normally would and even has to change how, not only what. The prey can survive the attack and die afterwards from internal bleeding or circulatory shock. The presence of two holes in the neck, corresponding with the canine teeth, are to be expected since this is the only way that most land carnivores have to catch their prey. There are reports of stray Mexican hairless dogs being mistaken for chupacabras. While I do find these dogs creepy, I once again think the locals could identify a Mexican hairless dog. I have never looked at a poodle and said, is that an ape? During the first year, more than 200 reports were made in Puerto Rico. In June 2004, a rancher near San Antonio, Texas killed a hairless dog, like creature, which was attacking the livestock. The animal intentionally given the name El Menor Beast was later determined by DNA SA conducted on the University of California to be a coyote with a demoderic or sarcopetic mange. In October 2004, two more carcasses were found in the same area. Biologists in Texas examined the samples for the two carcasses and determined they were also coyotes suffering from very severe cases of mange. In Coleman, Texas, a farmer named Reggie Legau caught an animal in a trap. He set up after the deaths of a number of his chickens and turkeys. The animal was described as resembling a mix of a hairless dog, rat, and kangaroo. 
The gal provided the animal to the Texas Parks and Wildlife officials for identification. September 17, 2006, phone interview with John Aldofi, founder of the Lost World Museum, that the critter was caught on Tuesday and was thrown out in Thursday's trash. In mid-August 2006, Michelle O'Donnell of Turner, Maine, described an evil-looking rodent-like animal with fangs that had been found dead alongside a road. The animal was apparently struck by a car and was unidentifiable. A lot of time dogs are struck by cars, they are. Photographs were taken and the witnesses' reports seem to be in relatively agreement that the creature was canine in appearance, but in widely published photos seemed unlike any dog or wolf of the area. Photos from other angles seem to show a chow or a kita mixed breed dog. It was reported that the carcass was picked clean by vultures before experts could examine it. For years, residents of Maine have reported a mysterious creature and a string of dog mauling. In May 2007, a series of reports on National Columbia News reported more than 300 dead sheep in a region of Boyaca and the capture of the possible specimen to be analyzed by zoologists at the National University of Columbia. In August 2007, Phyllis Canyon found three animals in Surreo, Texas. She and her neighbors reported to have discovered three strange animal carcasses outside Canyon's property. She took the photographs of the carcasses and preserved the head of one of them in a freezer before turning it over, turning it over for DNA analysis. Canyon reported that nearly 30 chickens on her farm had been accentuated over a period of years, a factor which led her to connect the carcasses with the Chupacabra legend. State mammologist John Young estimated that the animal in Canyon's pictures was a gray fox suffering from an extreme case of mange. In November 2007, biologist researchers at Texas State University San Marcos determined from DNA samples that the suspicious animal was a coyote. The coyote, however, had grayish blue, mostly hairless skin and large fanged teeth, attributes which caused it to appear different from normal coyotes. Additional skin samples were taken to attempt to determine the cause of the hair loss. On January 11, 2008, a sighting was reported at the province of Capiz in the Philippines. Some of the residents from the Bangare believed that it was the chupacabra that killed eight chickens. The owner of the chickens saw a dog-like animal attacking the chickens. On August 8, 2008, a DeWitt County deputy, Brandon Radell, filmed an unidentifiable animal along back roads near Surreo, Texas. On his dashboard camera, the animal was about the size of a coyote, but was hairless with a long snout, short front legs, and long back legs. However, writer's boss, Sheriff Jody Zavesky, believed it may be the same species of coyotes identified by Texas State University, San Marcos researchers, in November 2007. The video footage was shown on an April 2011 episode of the sci-fi television series Factor Fate. Paranormal Files, where an investigative team tried to recreate the dashboard video footage using a miniature horse, Mexican hairless dog, both which were bred locally. Neither test animal matched the creature of the video. The team had also tested DNA sample taken from an alleged carcass of one of the creatures and found by a local rancher, and later identified it as being a hybrid wolf coyote. In September 2009, CNN aired a report showing close-up video footage of an identified dead animal. The same CNN report stated the locals have begun speculating the possibility that they, this might be a chubacabra. A Blanco, Texas taxidermist reported that he received the body from a former student whose cousin had discovered the animal in his barn. Where did where it had succumbed to a poison left out for rodents. The taxidermist expressed his belief that this is a genetically mutated coyote. 
On September 18, 2009, taxidermist Jerry Ayer sold the Blanco, Texas to recover to the Lost World Museum. The museum, as reported in the Syracuse Post Standard on September 26, 2009, is placing the creature on display as it works with the unnamed university to have the remains tested. In July 2010, there were reports of chupacabras being shot dead by animal control officers in Hood County, Texas. Second creature was also reportedly spotted and killed several miles away. However, an officer of Hood County Animal Control said Texas A&M University scientists conducted tests identifying the corpses as a coyote-dog hybrid with signs of mange and internal parasites. The second reported chupacabra shot July 9th around eight miles south of Crescent was eaten by vultures before it could be taken for testing. On December 18, 2010 in Nelson County, Kentucky, Mark Cothran shot and killed an animal that he could not recognize and feared. Many pictures of the chupacabra were taken and the story was well documented by various news organizations. Catherine's described the creature as having large eyes, whiskers, a long tail, about the size of a house cat. Cothran says he spoke with the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources and handed over the preserved animal for further analysis. On July 4, 2011, Jack Crabtree of Lake Jackson, Texas, reported seeing a chupacabra in his backyard. At first, Crabtree stood firm on the original theory of the chupacabra, but after local newspapers and several media reporters wrote the story on July 11th, he quickly backed down, agreeing with wildlife experts that it was most likely a coyote with mane. It was a spoof, a practical joke, Crabtree said. I really didn't believe it. This story appeared on CNN as well as MSNBC on July 15, 2011. Local authorities caught what Crabtree saw. Experts confirmed the animal was definitely a coyote with mange. On September 17, 2013, a Fox 2 news affiliate in St. Louis, Missouri, posted on its website a report of two sightings. In the first, a woman spotted a small gray dog-like animal near the front gate of an old Lake Hill Speedway in St. Louis. A week previously, a hunter claimed to have killed a chupacabra while coon hunting. The Mississippi Department of Wildlife said that it was a dog with mange. In October 2013, WOWT News in Omaha reported that two Nebraska Departments of Road employees claimed to have spotted chupacabras just outside Blair, Nebraska. The individuals took photos of the animals and they described them as four-legged Dracula and a scrawny, scraggly thing. The animal had no hair, looked skinny and weak. Later, the directors of animal health at the Henry Dorley Zoo in Omaha, Nebraska identified the animal as a coyote. A Texan couple who resides in a ranch in Victoria County informed the media that they had shot and killed a chupacabra on their property during the evening of February 23, 2014. A wildlife biologist with the Texas Parks and Wildlife Organization also spoke with the media and stated, I've seen squirrels, raccoons, and coyotes in the area with the same features. They're chupacabra, a mythical creature that most people see in what is really sarcotic mange, which is caused by a mite that bites the animal, and it can be on any ant mammal, dogs, cats, coyotes, foxes, and humans can get another version as well. On April 3rd, 2014, a Texas couple claimed to have captured Chupacabra in Ratcliffe, Texas. In March 29th, 2014, Live Signs Benjamin Radford suggested the rat animal was a raccoon suffering from sarcoptic mange. One alleged Chupacabra was killed in Nicaragua and was examined by scientists of the Autonomous National University of Nicaragua. When the scientists revealed that the carcass was that of a common dog, they were met with skepticism and derision. Nobody wants to restore a story with a headline, Chupacabra turns out to be Chihuahua. Most scientists who have looked into alleged Chupacabra sightings or findings agree that the creatures are quite terrestrial canines, often coyotes suffering from mange. An increase in cases of mange is attributed to global warming. Just, uh, mange is Nature's way of saying, take off your coat. <laughs> in August, an eyewitness, Madeline Tortino, reported seeing creatures in a Puerto Rican town of Canavanas, where as many as 150 farm animals and pets were reportedly killed. In this one, you'd think a pack of feral dogs large enough for this sort of killing? 
would be easy to find. In summary, most of these cases of chupacabra are probably actually feral dogs, not chupacabra. But this does not discount those few cases when what was seen was not a feral dog. The problem I find commonly with cryptozoologists is in its rush to gather info like a student cramming for a test, they commonly weaken their own cases. Then the skeptic just has to pull one thread. Say photos of this dog was labeled by experts as a chupacabra and it all fails. Most of the amazing new batch of feral dogs and animals, some diseases and some not, that at least need medical attention and study. It's cool and all, but it's an invasive species. Maybe if it was not called a chupacabra, it would actually get scientific and medical help. But do keep in mind, this doesn't admit fit for all chupacabra sightings. Thank you. All in a search for more in life. In the history of the natural world to the supernatural, I found many weird things. But just because I don't know what it is doesn't make it supernatural. While the true heart of science is to always question even yourself. In the end, I have become an objective atheist. I am an atheist, but I want there to be more. According to UFO Magazine, March, April 1996, there have been more than 2,000 reported cases of animal mutilations in Puerto Rico attributed to the Chubacaba. However, they do not attribute the mutilations to aliens themselves, but to one of their pets or experiments gone awry. Such creatures are known as anomalous biological entities, ADEs, in UFO circles. Now, I want to clarify. I hear a lot of this shortening this to Abe's and UFO, and uh, this is, really has to stop. It's you. F O it is not a word. It stands for unidentified flying object. Okay? Once people start going UFO or seeing it as its own special word, they start to think it means flying saucer and it does not. Okay, that's why I often state in Abe, as people call it, I would probably just call it A B E's. That's what it is. Those who think the Chupacabra is an ABE also believe that there is a massive government and mass media conspiracy to keep the truth hidden from the people, probably to prevent panic. This view is maintained despite the fact that the president of the Puerto Rico House of Representatives Agricultural Commission, Mr. Juan T. Tech Lopez, introduced a resolution asking for an official investigation to clarify the situation. Inside Edition sent a crew to Puerto Rico to investigate the ABE story. They allegedly ridiculed the mayor, who was a witness to the Chupacabra, and basically made fun of the whole idea. 
George Martin, a Puerto Rican journalist who described himself as a leading UFO re researcher, reports that it has been brought to his attention that the U.S. and Puerto Rico governments have captured two of these creatures. Perhaps there will soon be a film on the ABE autopsy to, to rival the well-known alien autopsy film. Martin cautions us not to exclude other reasonable possibilities. The ABEs can also be a product of highly sophisticated genetic manipulation by human agencies. Chinese Russian scientist by the name of Dr. Xian Kachin has produced genetic manipulations which have created new species of electronically crossed plant, animal, organisms. Kachin developed an electronic system whereby he can pick up the bioelectro field of DNA of living organisms and transfer it electronically to other living organisms. By these means, he has created incredible new breeds of ducks, chickens, with physical characteristics of full species, goats, rabbits, a new breed of plant such as corn wheat, peanuts, sunflower seeds, and cucumber watermelons. These are produced by linking the genetic data of several living organisms contained in the bioenergetic fields by means of ultra high frequencies. Biological linking, if the Russians have created this technology, then without doubt the US and other powers have too. Therefore, it is quite possible that the chubacabra or the ABEs could have been developed by humans. Martin goes on to report that chubacabra has been killed with, and blood tests have been done on the creature. Genetic analysis so far has revealed that the blood is in no way compatible with human blood, nor with any animal species known to science. The traces ratio of magnesium, phosphorus, calcium, and potassium are incompatible with those of normal human blood. They are much too high. The albumin and guanine Rg ratio was also incompatible. The ratios found do not allow the results of the analysis to be compatible with those of any known animal species. At present, we can't place the sample with any earthly organisms. Therefore, it could well be a product of a highly sophisticated alien technology or advanced genetic manipulation. An organism alien to our own environment could be extraterrestrial, could be undiscovered. This is by far the most difficult of the chupacabra types to accept. Although I disagree with the whole, you have to believe in a government conspiracy for this to work idea is wrong. I just think the government is the largest body of unqualified idiots that run from the lowest to at best average quality work possible. Look at the quality of work in the JFK assassination and the complete crap excuses they give for the Area 51 alien crash test dummy. Regardless of any of these situations, all their excuses only made it worse, showing that they completely missed the crux of the problem. They dropped time traveling crash test dummies, supposedly, that went to the past and were found years later. Although, if you look at original reports of Area 51, they didn't include bodies until later. People could have been afraid to talk about them, though. Hard to say. But that's really not an issue here, except for in the questioning of the complacence of government being able to organize such a conspiracy. I just think that whenever you see people do this, they're trying to attach an insane concept to a questionable one, making both seem crazy. Logical thought does not work that way. Now, I am not against fully concept this could have been created. Nowadays it's gotten to the point that you don't have to be a country. Labs, many corporations, or just individuals with access to enough funds could probably do it privately nowadays. But in that case, 
there would have been a follow-up, and then hopefully there would be a rest, unless they wanted to find it. It gets too complicated to be an answer for an animal that's running around killing goats. That's the main problem. Thank you.